Greetings, critical viewers. We're back with more of King's Quest V. Now we're gonna go up here. It looks like there's some uh, Ooh, gypsies. Keep an eye on the gypsies, Graham. I don't trust them. Oh well, if you don't trust them, then that must really mean something, because you trust so many people. Hey, the guy's whittling. The sullen man doesn't appear to be the conversational sort. Okay. Well then, what about this guy? The ox's mouth is too full of grass to even attempt a conversation with Graham. Yeah, plus the fact that it can't speak. There's that obstacle, too. Let's go in. Hey. It will cost you one gold coin to see Madamushka. It will cost you no gold coins to see me. Duh. Go. Graham, seriously. All right, so we got to get a gold coin. Can't use a silver coin. Because a silver coin, nobody apparently wants a silver coin. It doesn't do any, get, Graham, you need to go to the next screen. Check it. Oh my God. Oh my God, go. Go. Holy shit. I know you can go this way. Oh my God. What? You're so sad. What troubles you, young maiden? Uh, miss. Willow? Yes? You can talk? <laughs> why, of course I can. What did you expect? Yeah, why? I've never seen a talking tree before. What's wrong? Why'd you attempt to initiate the Everything's conversation? Wrong. Can't you tell? I'm not really a tree. I'm really a princess. You see, my fiancé and I were walking through this wood when a nasty old witch came along and was instantly charmed by my handsome prince. When he naturally refused her advances, she jealously banished him to a faraway land and turned me into a tree. Then she stole my heart. Stole your heart? What? Yes. She turned my heart to gold and took it away with her. The only way I can become human again is to have my heart brought back. Now, all I have to cheer me up is my heart. It's quite magical, you know. It plays the sweetest music you've ever heard. Now please, leave me alone in my sorrow. Man, you are a buzzkill. God. All right, so we actually have to, believe it or not, battle a witch in order to uh, get her, her heart back. Get, Graham, Graham, seriously, go. Graham, go. For, Graham, I swear to God, go. Oh my God, I have to get to the very edge. That's, oh God. Yeah, there's woods over here, but uh, we don't want to go in there yet. Eh, good lord. Come on. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Maybe I shouldn't play in window mo windowed mode. This doesn't seem to be working out too great for me. Oh, God. You can do it. All right, forget it. We'll go this way. It seems to work best on the left side, so I guess we'll just do that from now on. If I have to go uh, to the bottom, then, you know, so be it, but we'll avoid it if possible. All right, I think actually next we have to go into the desert. No, I'm not. You, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to see your precious Matamushka. Matamushka. All right, we're going to say this will be part two. Save. All right, so the, the shitty thing about the desert is that... Cedric, what the fuck are you even tagging along for? Useless. All right. See, this is where the dog ran off to, which, like, I don't know why. He ran off with his stick into a barren wasteland. Now, the thing that sucks about the desert, too, is that you can die of thirst. But you're supposed to find oasises, oa oases in order to prevent that from happening. Oh, good lord. I don't remember it being this far. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon... All right, narrator. The narrator sounds like he weighs approximately 700 pounds. I don't know how much he actually weighs. He sounds like he has a mustache, too, and, like, crazy long sideburns. Ooh! 
We're gonna have to get some of that water. Delicious. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Look at that. And look at this. The facade of a magnificent temple has been carved into the rocky cliffs by an unknown ancient civilization. Really? What is this? Look at this. Looming majestically before him, the massive temple door beckons tantalizingly to Graham. What's that sound? Oh, that was that was the majestic that was the majestic music. Good lord. Okay, wait a second. What am I supposed to do here? Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. You know what's funny is that feel strength and renewal flowing through. In uh, I think in the NES version, I read that they had to remove that line From Nectar of the Gods. Sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeat. What? Shit, we gotta hide. Fuck, 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 fuck. No, 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 no! You fucking idiot! No, 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 no! What? Okay. That, that meant that bandits were approaching, but then I somehow canceled it? From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeat. Anyway, while we're waiting here, um, they had to remove the line Nectar of the Gods because it was a religious reference. Ooh, that's close. Open Sesame! You certainly sound like a native desert dweller. Great job with the voice. Holy crap, that magic staff that he has allows him entry. Now, what you're supposed to get from that is that now we have to go get that magic staff. Ah, life gives Shut up. All right, I'm going to save here, and then we're going to go after him. And, oh, God, if, uh, I think I can remember exactly where to go, because I, I made a, I actually made a map of this when I played it way, way back. Long time ago. Can you, oh God, can you go down? Oh God, this is gonna be difficult if, if you can't go down. All right guys, hang on a second. I'm actually going to move this down a couple. There's gonna be an annoying line on the bo bottom of the video, but it'll be way easier for me to go down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Ah, crap. Is this it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I don't know if this is it. Oh god, 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 this isn't it, this isn't it. Shit, shit, shit. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Ah, him. crap. He must drink, and soon. Mmm, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Is it up? It's up. I think it's up. It is. Yes! Ah! I overshot it. Okay. Whew! I don't know where the, all this water is coming from. Life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Shut up, you fat oaf. Alright. I'm gonna save here. Thanks. Oh god. Okay. Let's go. By the way, if you guys end up enjoying this play... Okay. Freaking get it! If you guys end up enjoying this playthrough, we might play a whole lot more Sierra point and clicks because they're freaking awesome. Um, the ones specifically I have in mind are uh, the Gabrielle Knight series, which are somewhat horror related. Uh, I said horror, not whore, by the way. Um, also, uh, Laura Bow, the Laura Bow series is pretty good. Those are the ones I have in mind, but, um... The hot sun and shut the are... fuck up! Oh, God. I'm trying to remember. We gotta find their bandit camp. Yeah, shh. Crap. Uh-oh. Get it. Can you do it? Oh, 
Oh no. Too late. Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? Sh Shut up! God! Dying for a drink? <laughs> God, this friggin' obese narrator is hilarious. All right, go. Okay, now I gotta remember. I know it's to the west. I know it is. Okay, one. That's two. Hang on, here's a third. Okay. Don't we go? I thought we just went west here. Can you go? Oh god. Yes! This, I thought this was exactly what I did! That guy's wasted. My god. We'll have to save here. Oh god. Here, get the water. Ah, life gets Shut it. Just drink it, Graham. We gotta get out of here. Okay. So, um... What is happening back here? I'm gonna take a gander. Beautiful harem girl, belly dances for the merrymaking bandits within the larger tent. Hmm. With disgust, Graham looks at a drunken bandit lying face down in the desert sand. With disgust. Passed out. With disgust. I guess. I guess Graham's not a drinking man. All right, we gotta get in here. Oh, oh, you guys recognize that? That's a little staff that he used to, um, uh, open up that mysterious cave. Very quiet. Graham reaches out and takes the staff into his possession. Now you gotta be careful getting out of here. Lest the man wakes up. Shh. We did it! Ah! I'm gonna save again. Because... We're about to venture out into the desert, but we actually... The, the shitty thing about this is, is that we have to... Graham, I swear to God. It's time to leave. Oh my God. Get it! The shitty thing about this is, is that we have to... find actually an additional oasis... Um, in order to... Uh, find an additional item actually two additional items that we will need later I swear to god I'm just gonna leave it there so that's one screen let's see this is the second one I believe third one and then we go up eh maybe I think this is it. There's like, there's like, I think there's like three. Oh, yeah, this is it. This is the second oasis. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You're, you're relieved. Okay. Now there's a thing, a couple screens north of here. And of course, you know, back when this game was released, people actually had to pull out a pen and paper and make maps. They couldn't just look it up on game facts. Here we go. Oh, oh. A picked clean and sun-bleached skeleton lies in the sand of the hot, dry desert. What happened? Who can say? But it makes Graham uneasy nevertheless. Yes, the man who has defied death so many times makes him uneasy. Uneasily, Graham reaches down and removes the old shoe from the desert sand. Great! What's that old shoe for, you might ask? You'll never guess. The worn old shoe is cracked and dry from the desert sun. Well, you'll find out later. <coughs> Shut up. We need to get back to the, uh, that freaking Alibaba cave. So we can use the, the staff and everything. I think we just go north. Could be wrong. We're gonna go past the skeleton. And, uh, you know, this game's great and everything. It actually... This was the best-selling PC game from 1990 through 1995, if that tells you anything. So, I mean, for five years, this was this was th this was it. And I think I go this way, perhaps. Good, we did it. 
And um, and that's even after King's Quest VI came out in 1993, which I think King's oh. Quest VI, I mean, this is a good game, but King's Quest VI is quite possibly the best uh, point-and-click adventure game of all time, in my opinion. All right, so we know the password. Now we can use the staff. Open Sesame. Whoa. Oh, no. The staff broke. Well, that sucks. Now, we don't have much time, but we gotta get this. Bending down, Graham hurriedly picks up the gold coin from the temple floor. We also need to get this. Quickly, Graham grabs the old brass bottle. And now we need to leave. That was close. Whew. I'd love to show you guys the death there, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> Leave. All right, now we are officially done with the desert. Thank God, because it sucks. Oh. All right, I'm going to save real quick. And uh, just in case you guys want to know what happens when you rub the lamp. Oh, freedom at last. Now you spend the next 500 years in a bottle. Yeah, that's quite the unfair genie. I gotta say. They love those puns, man. They love those puns. They, I, they think that they are hilarious. Because they, they don't stop. Like they, they, That's been like a King's Quest mainstay. Or puns upon death. Oh, thank God we're done with this desert. This desert... They, they don't... Like, the, the annoying desert theme actually comes back in King's Quest VII. And uh, I think that's what I was thinking of just now when I thought I had to get something else from the desert. Because, uh, like, the first stage of the game, you get thrown to this desert. It's so annoying. The hot sun I might do King's Quest VII, too, actually. I'm not sure. That was... It, it was a good one. It's just... It was sort of around... It was an awkward time because after King's Quest 7 they made King's Quest 8 which was like a like a first person action game and it was totally awful. Um so 7 was around the time of the descent. Well, there you, are. I was just starting to get concerned. you were just Don't starting. Don't worry about me, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing. You were just starting. Really? It was just starting to get worried. All right, so now that we have one gold coin, we can go see Madame Mushka. There you go. You may see Madame Mushka now. <laughs> you sound... One, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information. Okay. Or he sounds distinctly non-gypsy oh. right there. You are here to see Madame Mushka, no? Well, come closer. Deep down. I will tell you your fortune. Already I can tell that you are on a quest of great urgency. We will see what we can find out for you. Look, Ingram. Look into the crystal ball. All right. I'll bite. Look, Melanin. Look what I have for you. Take a good look at what you did to my brother, Alexander. Because of you, he's doomed to spend the rest of his days as a cat, and there's nothing I can do about it. But you can do something about it. Since you're the one that did this to him, you're the only one who can turn him back again. Back to the wizard, Manana. Alexander! I don't know how, Mordek. Yeah, those wizard. fingernails. I just happened to stumble across the magic spells and accidentally turned your brother into a cat. I didn't mean it. Please believe me, Mordek. I don't know how to turn him back into a wizard. You're holding out on me, little man. You're taking advantage of my good nature, but not for long. If I don't get a change of tune from you soon, I'll feed your family to the cat, starting with your dear mother. <laughs> Remember what I said. I'll only give you a little more time to decide before your family becomes cat. That is all. What? But I see that your mission it's very dangerous indeed. I will give you something to help you. Here, where is it? It is a magic amulet. It will protect you against all but the most powerful magic. Thank you. 
Good luck, King Lamb. Be careful. That Mordek is a bad one. Thank you, Madam Mushka. All right, I feel like I gotta explain some of what you just saw. So, the wizard with the black hair, the guy who stole the castle, his name's Mordak, and his brother's name is Mananan, who is the cat. And actually, um, Mananan is from King's Quest Three, and the guy that Mordak was holding, Alexander, he was the star of King's Quest Three. He was actually a slave of Mananan's who eventually overthrew him and became adopted into King Graham's family. So, there you have a little bit of background on what's going on. They, uh, what? Madam Mushka is tired. No more for today. Man, you are getting aggressive. And if she's tired after one reading, I mean, it's kind of kind of ridiculous, don't you think? Freaking, you sit down. Sit down. God. That stupid cow needs to be quiet. And the cow, too! Ha <laughs> uh, Get it? I was calling Matamushka a cow. Alright. Go down. Go down! We need to check out a couple more screens, because we haven't encountered a couple of other characters that may be important later. Including this guy. Let, well, let's look at him first. Creepily. Upon a fallen log sits a dashing young prince who looks very sad and confused. Man, there's... <laughs> okay. The narrator likes the male characters. Likes to describe uh, them a certain way. Me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Th nothing wrong. Why, yes. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been searching everywhere for my fiancé. She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses. Fetching blue eyes and smooth, creamy skin. Have you seen her anywhere about? No, sorry. I haven't seen anyone like that. That's what I figured. No one has seen her. I bet that a witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. I'll keep an eye out for her. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well... I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. Okay, first of all, your girlfriend is clearly the princess trapped as a tree. Second of all, she said you were sent off to a faraway land, so I don't know if you're an imposter or what. And third of all, she's two screens over, so you clearly did not search that hard. Let's, let's get some facts straight here. Oh, God. You can even see her up there. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. The I was just noticing your son's marionette. It's very interesting. Where did you get it? Oh my God, so boring. It's grandson, not son. And I made it for him. What a dick. Why do you care? I just wanted to comment on its artistry. It's very well done. I don't suppose it could be bought. If it could, the price would be very steep. What? I reckon you couldn't afford it. Now, leave me and my grandson be. My God. Hey, kid. Hey, kid. Graham attempts to speak to the young gnome, but the boy seems to be very shy and doesn't answer. Well, then. All right, I think that's where we're going to end this video. Let's see if we can go down one more screen. Go. Go on down. One more screen. One more screen, Graham. One, you can do it. You do it. Do, do it, do. Oh, God. All right, I'll save here. This is a much more peaceful setting for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. I will see you guys later for more King's Quest V. Think critically.